next approximately a minute. Yeah, I see the uh, slide, uh, the starting slide right now. How's my makeup? <laughs> Do I have to wear the mask? Maybe I'll start with the mask. Let me put this on there. I make sure there's no feedback. Yeah. Speaker all the way down, right? Sounds like it's a house. Mm. All right. Good morning, everyone. I hope you're doing fine, and I hope you're ready for a, another live stream. Uh, we are together live with uh, Dr. Wanura Sinivarantne from uh, Nayar at uh, Wichita State University. Waruna, how are you doing? Very good, Rami. Good to see you. It's great to see you as well. So we got a very exciting uh, session that is being planned today. It's already starting with the excitement. You, you're you starting with a AFP test just behind you. I can, oh, yeah. I can see, already... Uh, you see our Electro Impact partners, they've been working very hard last uh, about close to three months uh, setting up this equipment. If you were here three months ago, uh, this is just the rubble, and we had a we had our a, a crash lab. We demolished the entire area. I did a lot of remodeling, and you can see uh, the remodeling was done about three three months ago. And and uh, ever since, Electro Impact's been working on uh, getting our uh, uh, AFP system set up. This is awesome. So I am I'm very excited to do this uh, this uh, lecture. I mean, this is this uh, fun chat. You've been um, we, we, we've been friends for quite some time now, and of course. and having to communicate with. Uh, I'm sorry, I am distracted because I see what's happening behind you. <laughs> yes, and, and I have a big love for AFP machines, so like I know. All right, cool. So the way we're gonna go about this is we're gonna give a couple of um, minutes for folks to uh, to join us. I can already see. A lot of people saying, uh, throwing comments, hello, and so on. So this is great. I am, um, and we're gonna move and play a little video, and then we're gonna get started with our discussion. How does this sound to you, Aruna? Sounds good to me, Rami. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and play that video.
This is, I love the music. This is, an awesome, this is an awesome start for our session. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started and ask you why Atlas? Like, why is, why did you, why did you think of creating uh, this laboratory? Right. So about two and a half years ago, so Spirit Aerosystems in Wichita, Kansas, right? So uh, uh, CEO of Spirit Aerosystems uh, came to uh, WSU on campus. He was announcing their new building on campus uh, at Wichita State University. And uh, he was talking about the, the demand for the aircraft uh, the next 20 years. I mean, I know right now it's a different time. I, I hope it's a short, uh, short term issue. But uh, uh, around the world, we got about 26,000 airplanes that were built probably 50, 60 years. Uh, but the next 20 years, we have about 40, there's a demand for 40,000 airplanes around the world. Um, and then he was stressing how we need to change the way we build aircraft. And, and we cannot double the size of the factory because aircraft mechanics, are they're, they're a different breed of uh, uh, mechanics. So it's very hard to uh, find uh, enough labor for aircraft manufacturing. So you really need to look into automation, advanced materials, fast way of uh, producing these things. And all of a sudden, a light bulb went on, on my head that uh, it's probably time for us to uh, start uh, looking, uh, you know, dive deep into that. We already have an automation lab at NIAR, but uh, the uh, Atlas or the Automated Technologies Lab for Aerospace Systems focusing on uh, uh, composite manufacturing and inspection. And you see a later slide that we are focusing on, you know, just like the video, right? You're not just manufacturing, we're looking at uh, manufacturing, inspection, analysis, including process modeling, as well as, uh, uh, you know, inspection and testing, you know, the, basically the uh, uh, cradle to grave kind of uh, uh, support, and even looking at uh, teardown inspection of all the aircrafts. This is awesome. So, so I mean, I, I, I believe in this mission statement because I'm in the same field, or else I'm in trouble as well. I would, I would be irrelevant. So, right. yeah, this is, uh, this is. I do believe in this why, and I, I concur with you. So, what's the mission of, uh, what's the mission of Atlas, and right. like, what, what's your mission? So, mission of Atlas, uh, I, I, I say. Uh, past, present, and future. You know, you and I, we, we both tied to universities. 
our mission for uh, education, uh, you know, basically generating the future workforce, industry ready future workforce. That's that's kind of in our blood. So it's pretty obvious the future. We want to create, uh, we want to give the opportunities for young engineers to learn about uh, the cutting edge technologies that the aircraft industry is using uh, today and future, basically get them ready for the factory of the future, you know, machine learning algorithm, artificial intelligence uh, uh, algorithm, how to make the uh, the part better, reduce uh, the uh, the defects, uh, make these machines more efficient using these technology, these uh, algorithms, uh, advanced inspections using material. So future is pretty obvious. If some, if a student work in this type of lab for three to four years get a lot of hands-on experience, which is something lacked today uh, in our systems. Uh, and then they get a lot of hands-on experience. Uh, so when they go to the industry, they, they, they're basically using the same technologies that uh, software, hardware that the industry use. So they are ready. They, the industry doesn't have to spend their time two years training an engineer to be a, a material and process engineer. They are ready the next day. Uh, the present, uh, the present is something we've been uh, doing ever since the NIAR was set up. So present means that we work with the industry and, and work uh, side by side and, and try to solve, uh, help solving their problems so that we work, uh, uh, you know, the WSU is very famous for applied uh, research. Uh, so working with the industry and try to solve their problems. So for example, if a small business or a medium sized business, they want to see, Hey, can we use automation to produce, uh, something that they do today and they want to bring automation or change the material from a thermoset to thermoplastic, they can come here and work with us. And, and which is great for our students because now they're not just doing uh, just R and D project. They're actually working with the industry, uh, solving uh, problems, and then they get great experience. Um, the past uh, is probably something not obvious, but the past is basically, you know, anytime I talk about automation, some people come and say, "Oh, you're going to take our jobs away." It's actually quite the opposite. If you were to actually use these technologies in a smart way, right? So think about an aircraft industry. So you know, uh, let's let's use uh, you know. So they they let's say they make twenty fuselages a month using current technologies. But with the automation, advanced materials, they'll all of, all of a sudden increase their rate from twenty airplanes a month to twenty five or thirty airplanes. Now, the, the as far as work that goes into the system doesn't end there. That somebody has to put the wiring in there. Somebody has to attach a lot of things. So now instead of working on 20 fuselages a month, now we have to create more jobs in order to feed the other, uh, the, the, the subsequent uh, steps. So the past is basically work with the, uh, uh, the current workforce who are you know, used to traditional machining, manufacturing technologies, and, and basically create a, a workforce training program so they can learn the software, hardware, so they could be uh or you know the the afp programmers to uh you know all kinds of these uh, uh high-tech jobs uh that you know that we're going to need in this factory of the future i i i mean you you are echoing verbatim what i fundamentally believe in and um there is uh, john Melilli who posted a comment saying uh, i'm gonna go ahead and show it on the screen atlas is going to be a game changer <laughs> for um, the aerospace industry. I I want to agree with this because because I mean a lot of people like I'm from McNair, you're from Atlas, and we have like almost the same mission. I mean our goal is is really to make sure that our students are industry ready. And people often think that there is like competition, or people often think that uh, automation is going to take the jobs. Actually, mm -hmm. we need everyone working together so that right. we can create i mean you said the numbers you you said them and mm -hmm. like the amount of airplanes this pandemic won't last it's gonna eventually right. yeah. shift and we're going to need more and more airplanes and we need, we're gonna need more and more skilled stem careers that mm -hmm. technical careers that that they don't exist today 
So I'm going to use an analogy that I often use for our lab. And tell me if you agree with this, which is, mm-hmm. which is we're creating like a hospital for like resident program for medical students where mm-hmm. just like a medical students go and have his training before they become a doctor. And mm-hmm. here and at Atlas and like students who are actually they're doing is uh, getting ready, job ready from day one. They understand yes. the program, how to run and so on. So. So, so we actually work with the local industry and, and, and did a survey a few years back. And when a student graduate and, and go get a job at industry, it takes them about two years uh, to get them really productive because the, the first two years is going to be training. And obviously, they probably get hired at a very introductory level, at an introductory salary. You get two years of experience and get the training and the next thing you know, they're they're gone. So you are basically training, uh, 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 you know, some new staff member for somebody else. So that was a pretty big challenge. And and if if a student get to work in a place like this for six months, I mean, if you're an Atlas, you know, we have a lot of internship programs, summer internship programs and things like that. But even as you know somebody who works here for you know three four years that familiar with these softwares and hardware i mean they can go to work at you know boeing spirit or airbus or somewhere you know any any of these spaces they'll be ready the next day how to operate the software how to do the programming how to operate the robot and so on and so forth and 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 they will acquire uh skills of how to actually work in teams like i i struggle as a professor sometimes how do you give this aspect to student? And what I see just behind you happening is enough of a um, of an experience for them to actually be job ready. So um, we have uh, uh, Neptali is in complete agreement with our discussion, and he's just posting a program uh, post. And then Justin Wright is saying um, is telling you what an amazing program you are putting together. So right. Okay. But but I, I got to stress something, though. If you go back to that slide, since you already was on that. Um, I am. So, I, I, you know, this is a, you know, this the, the, the right hand side of that slide is something I'm very, very proud of. You know, this this whole mission started two years ago, soon as literally, you know, Spirit CEO left and, you know, talking about the demand and what we need to do in the future. But ever since I've been talking to a lot of government, in the, you know, government uh, agencies, uh, industry partners, equipment manufacturers, software vendors, and, and uh, you know, all, all kinds of agencies. And all of these partners you see on the right-hand side, they're actively uh, participating in this mission. So they've been helping, they've been believing in this. Uh, this, is some, this is a great need that, uh, you know, definitely we need this in country. Uh, think about uh, material supplier, right? Um, you develop a new material system, and uh, you want to see if that works on a you know machine like this so that the material is industry ready um they have to probably go uh, uh you know some uh, some other place there's not many places in the country that can, they can go and have access so i know you have a system there there's only a handful of places somebody can go and get something done um so this you know with the help of these partners uh, this allows them, anybody, like a small business, like somebody's doing urban air mobility, not just aircraft, right? They can come here, work with us, uh, and, and you know, see, okay, what technology that, you know, works well. And then you, you, you'll see in the, all the technologies we're adding to this system, uh, they, they, the, the, each one of these technologies has their unique uh, advantages. So they can come here. It's like a maker space for AFP and thermoplasty because these systems have multiple heating system not just the uh the infrared heater that you see on this but we have laser hum three there's a multiple different lasers so they can actually look at how to process the same material with multiple different ways uh and and figure out what's what's the op, you know basically do a process optimization without making a massive investment in their place. And then once you figure out what works for you, you can go home and 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 really customize your system to whatever you need. I, I music, pure music, what you're saying. And, <laughs> and actually, I mean, this is, uh, this is um, like, it's a must 
for both industry and that. so so i'm gonna i'm gonna take this a step forward your position i mean and i know you personally and your position in a um you're not like in a, in a university center so not an industry actually enables you to do much much more than just having them to come and um to test equipment but actually you can you can help bring industries together to work on right. problems that usually they wouldn't even want to communicate on it yes so the, like i mean it's like a common ground for industry as well to unlock new innovation how do you feel about that i'm pretty excited about it and then we've been doing that for years so we have for example we have a, a consortium called cart kansas aviation research and technology grant where you know back in the days where beach and spirit and bombardier and spirit aero system they, they all get together uh, and then the Airbus now, uh, because we have an Airbus facility in Wichita as well. Um, so they all get together, sit in a table and, and discuss their issues. So, and, and you know, they, they may do the fundamental research and the, the, the preliminary research, research working together because everybody has the same problems, right? Yeah. And it's not like the, 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 the one company has different set of problems than the other. They all have the same problems. So, why don't we put together the you know minds and the resources and everything together and and find a solution? So that's uh, if you heard Encamp and Agate, and that is a, that is a pro you know that is something we've done uh, twenty plus years ago. So John Tomlin, who's our uh, executive uh, vice president, uh, also the executive director at NIAR, he was a young professor. I was a, at the time I was a student who was doing testing. And, and, and this was, you know, in the late 90s, where uh, actually early 90s, when, um, uh, when uh, the, like a general aviation trying to get into composites and the material suppliers had this different specification for each company. And he put, to, he put together a program, which later became, you know, Agate and NCAMP today, uh, where they, 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 each company basically uh, working together, develop a common specification for a composite material so they all can use the same material. So as a material supplier, you don't have to keep track of multiple uh, specification. You have one specification for a given material system. Uh, so they, they have material, the, the manufacturing costs went down for aircraft companies. They don't have to spend two to five million dollars each uh, qualifying the same material. So they share this material. And FAA, they don't have to monitor a bunch of different material systems. So put together a program. It, was a, it wasn't a consortium where you have to pay a membership to get into. It was a consortium where everybody put in something and everybody gets something out of it. And, and you see that, you know, this, this shared database today and, you know, it's, it's in the public domain. We don't charge people. So the idea is to commoditize composites material so if somebody wants to use the composite material for an aircraft or a submarine or whatever uh, they don't have to wait for two to five years qualifying the material or two to five million dollars uh, trying to qualify this material you literally go to the database and you know go through all the material properties and you pick the one that works for you immediate and then that that is already vetted by uh, the faa and and yeah. i mean i guess this is really what helps in the mission that you stated to unlock innovation. I mean, the whole goal is to make sure people are more successful and they're capable to innovate and so on. So I guess this fits perfectly in what uh, was stated as, as the why. You, so I have a, uh, a question here, but that's not technical. It's more of like, hi, from Valet Samak, hi, Varun and Rami. Yeah. Will, this, will this video be available later on? Uh, absolutely, all the videos will be uh, made available and there is a like a web page not a web page like a linkedin page um mm -hmm. that will be posted on my profile and on waruna's profile so that you can go back and uh, access uh, the video as well as the charts will be uh on that page so we will make sure this is available we have a yeah, comment we, we are working with valley's team uh so you see the material that here you know we don't get pre-preg rolls here right so we need to slit the material so valley's team is actually uh, designing uh, and all actually I'm probably ready to uh, you know do the the uh, the delivery here pretty soon uh, so we can uh, do the slitting in-house as well this is awesome 
Uh, there is a comment from uh, uh, from Neptali saying that he really appreciates the discussion that's going on as a quality engineer. So sure. that's really, really good. So Waruna, um, I made a mistake at the start because I know you very, very well. And <laughs> so I skipped the slide where I am to introduce you. So, uh. so I'm gonna go back just to, just to introduce you before we move forward in our chart. <laughs> um, I mean, first of all, you are the director of Atlas. You're a senior researcher at uh, research scientist at NIAR. Uh, you have a wealth of composites knowledge. I mean, everyone knows you in the domain, 20 plus years, and I am honored that, um, you know, you're giving this opportunity for young minds that, you know, they are still looking for, uh, for what to do and they're hearing this discussion and they might be, all right, you know what, composites is nice and, and this is exciting and we get to play with real big toys. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, your research portfolio is all over the place from the FAA, Department of Defense, NASA, you name it. Um, you're an active member um, of the CMH-17, uh, mm -hmm. the famous Composite Materials Handbook, as well as you previously worked as a stress analyst for Airbus. I just, the 380, I just wanted people to uh, know that we're, we're talking with someone who um, is a well-respected member of the industry and... <laughs> People uh, look uh, look uh, look look up to you. Um, so so, is there anything else you wanted to to use to in, in your introduction? Oh, this is this is good. This uh, uh, I mean uh, I gotta stress the CMH seventeen. Uh, that's a uh, that's a great group of people from all over the world. Industry, you know, you, you know, all the aircraft industry. They they put together this document, uh, uh, and uh, you know that's something where I learn a lot as a young engineer. Uh, listening to experienced people arguing. Sometimes they argue, but, you know, uh, these experienced people arguing about how they do things. And um, so that's a, that's a great community to be part of. So as, as, as long as arguments are technical, this is fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. But life includes all kinds of arguments, and one has to learn how to navigate things around. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. So... So we talked about Atlas's uh, mission. We talked about the manufacturing engineering education. Let's just start with an overview of, of Atlas. So I see right. uh, there are four sectors that, you, right, right. That, that you've identified for Atlas. What are these uh, 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 sectors that you've identified? So the, 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 as you, like you see on this chart, Atlas is uh, uh, you know, kind of a, the, the workforce. You know, we have close to 100 you know, students and, and staff. I think it was uh, probably 65, 70 students as a part of Atlas. And we work very closely with NIA Composites Lab, which I'm also part of. Um, and uh, so within Atlas, the, the workforce is divided into four main groups that you see here. The, the automated manufacturing. So you got the automated fiber placement machines like you see in the back, um, which can do thermoset, thermoplastic, dry fiber, CMC. Uh, and then um, we have uh, the, uh, the forming, press forming. So we can, we are in the process of setting up our compression molding, injection molding, over molding group. Uh, we've been doing a lot of work on thermoplastic, thermoplastic welding. So we are focusing currently on resistance induction and ultrasonic welds. Unfortunately, uh, maybe that's a diff different discussion <laughs> one of these days. We have a new yeah. lab set up. Uh, and uh, the comp you know, and then simulations. So manufacturing simulations, you know, doing geokinetics, not just the stress analysis, you know, uh, doing discrete damage modeling to geokinetics, you know, um, those ta that type of modeling to assist uh, process development, like thermoplastic welding, for example. We are using a lot of these analysis methods to uh, help us uh, develop our process and then improve the process toolings and so and so forth. And then the third group focus on high fidelity inspections from x-ray making gold standards all the way down to tap testing. There's, a, there's an array of inspection techniques. Uh, and then finally something we have a, a, a long history, uh, structural you know, uh, test and evaluation. So the, the, the group of Atlas is broken down to these four, four groups. And then the labs in Atlas, they are broken down to different sectors. I think as yes, a separate slide, maybe it'll, um try the next slide yeah there you go so but, but these before, are the... before i let you talk about uh about about the sectors um 
with everything you've mentioned, this sounds like uh, the Disneyland of composites. <laughs> I, time to time, I use that word. Uh, it's a Disneyland for AFP and thermoplastic. Uh, truly composites, right? I mean, you know, it, 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 it you know, encompasses, you know, pretty much, that's why I said cradle to grave, because uh, some of the research programs we do focus on bringing in uh, old airplanes and and uh, uh, kind of uh, do a teardown inspection and see how they did uh, during service. Because during uh, uh, during design uh, certification, we make certain assumptions uh, on our design, and and after a full lifetime in the fleet, that give us an opportunity to go into these composite aircraft, take them take them apart, and see how conservative we were uh, with this uh, initial design, so that we can use that knowledge for future designs uh, that that kind of increase our. Uh, confidence level uh, because there's not many data points when it comes to composite uh, you know data right so we have a big history for metals uh, with uh, for, for aircraft but for composite we are still in in the early stages so uh, what you learn from this uh, 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 these uh, test article we tear down uh, it, it help us uh, for the future so we do you know even that to, you know not just manufacturing we actually bringing in all the airplanes and do a lot of investigations as well. There was a, ah, I'm trying to remember, there was a retired B-52. Yeah, yeah. That B you got... B, so, yeah, so we have a, we have a separate lab, uh, aging aircraft focusing just on teardown inspection. They, they've been, uh, they, they have a, a pretty rich history of te tearing down uh, multiple KC-135 sections from C-5 to multiple aircraft. Uh, very recently, B-1B, I think you will see this uh, LinkedIn. You will see some of the news article coming up on the B-1B. Uh, obviously, the work is proprietary, work is ITA, but uh, we have some general announcements going on. We have even, tear, the, 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 this group have even tear down F-35s um, uh, for, to support the future sustainment of these aircraft. That's this is awesome. So so moving on to the Atlas overview, and sorry I interrupted you on that. No, that's all right. So there are multiple multiple sectors. Right. So the sector we are in right now is sector E, E for electro impact. Uh, and then uh, so we'll, we'll after this we'll, we'll go take a look at maybe one of these panels uh, when it's safer to go into the room. Uh, the 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 green screen here is uh, it's because we have. Uh, this is a laser protective glass. We have a class four laser in this robot, so we need to make sure that we uh, safeguard our operators. So that's uh, that's a big, big, uh, big thing here. Um, uh, but uh, we'll walk into the room um, and then we'll kind of walk around it and uh, I'll show you, maybe give you a closer look at that panel that they just manufactured. Uh, I, am and then, I am counting on that. I'm waiting for that. Okay. And then right after this, we can probably go in and then, uh, We'll walk over to the building behind it, that's sector C. We have a Coriolis AFP machine there. That's where the, the MicroSAM slitter is going to go. Um, so that's sector C. Sector J is on the next door. We are, we are developing a large inspe automated inspection and repair cell. Um, and then sector A is actually, if you go to the next, maybe go to slide, about two slides down. Yeah, sector A is actually, and uh, right next to Spirit Aerosystems. You can see on the screen, it's in between Spirit Aerosystem and, and uh, uh, Secured Air Force Base, uh, McConnell Air Force Base in Wichita. This is a 130,000 square feet new facility that we are in Hold the on. process of Hold renovating. On. Hold on a second. What's, say again, the, um, the, say again the size you just said? It's a 130,000 square oh, feet. Oh my goodness. <laughs> So just to give you an idea that that on that sketch, the top right hand corner, you see an autoclave. That autoclave is four meters by eight meters. Well, about 13 feet by 26. That's the inside cavity. So if we build some large structure here, we can take it over there and cure it. So that's our own autoclave. And that, that autoclave is probably about 65 feet long or something like that. And you can see that's a very small uh, compared to the rest of the building. And then this uh, this building also will have a lot of automated equipment. So the, uh, there's a press uh, from Ingle uh, 
uh, that can do injection molding. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, in the injection molding, compression molding, and over molding of a pretty reasonable size part. There's a lot of other automated equipment that's going to go in there. One of the unique thing about this facility, it gives us a lot of room for expansion. As you know, when you look at a university, the real estate on a university is, is like prime real estate. It's like you're trying to build something in the middle of Times Square, right? So every inch is very valuable. Yes. But this, this large, you know, as you know, manufacturing, you need a lot of space for moving things around. Um, so, but this new facility is going to give us that, that room for expansion. More than anything, we're going to be with our uh, long-term partner, Spirit Aero System, because right next door, they're actually building aircraft like that. The, the, the opposite to the, the, on the other side of the hangar, uh, they actually have aircraft manufacturing. So I'm in a manufacturing uh, environment, uh, very easily accessible. Uh, it's on a secured area. So uh, I'm pretty excited to move into this facility. Um, uh, we, we started renovating some uh, work, uh, some areas in this building, and we will be officially moving there in uh, next uh, spring. So, so, so next spring in 2021, uh, yep. that's the plan. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait for 2020. I'm, I can't wait for 2020 to be over with. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so there's plenty of comments saying it's impressive field trip. It's a Disneyland indeed, and so on. So, uh, we. I All think, right. I think the, the the light is light is green, so I, I think that means we can probably walk in there. But let me check with our. It's okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think we have the go, so we can go in. Uh, All right. Hopefully our our uh, our internet connection will still be good. Um. So let's just walk in and check out this panel. So here's a here's a closer look at the the uh, uh, the electro impact head. As you can see, it's very compact. Everything is in this head. You can see the composite materials in there. And if you were to put an in-process in, in inspection system, it's going to be there. The heater is here. So everything is in this, uh, this, this head. So the nice thing about that is um, you can see there's a head in the back over there. Var right? Varuna, can I ask a quick question about the head? If you can go back yes. to the head. Yeah. Let's go back to the head, please. So above above the heaters, uh, what is it that I'm seeing above the heaters, like the four? Yes. I believe they are for uh, uh, dampening the noise. It's like, uh, that's what I'm, uh, you know, I'm also uh, learning some of these uh, uh, additional things that they're adding. And, and that is to uh, kind of uh, minimize some of the noise uh, from cutting and things like that. Perfect. Perfect. We'll, 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 we'll have to check with our electro impact engineers on that, but uh, I believe that's what they are. So the nice thing about this, uh, this setup is that you can drop this head and pick up that head. And I'm not doing this by myself. We basically program the robot uh, so the robot can go and drop. So there's another head. On. So this system has uh, four heads right now. So you can see this is the quarter inch uh, eight toe head. That's what we see in the back there. That's the uh, half inch head. Uh, and then there's a probe head and a cutting. We, we, maybe we'll go around here. Uh, so that's the uh, the probe head and the cutting uh, cutting head. You can so the blade is uh, the blade is in here. So uh, oh, we we've, we've taken the blade uh, out. But uh, so this table you see here, this is a 20 feet by six feet table. So if you think about it like an in cam material qualification, that we have to make dozens of panels, right? And it takes us months to make these by hand. Now we can literally program because those are standard panels, same layup, right? You know, you know, pretty generally, generally same layup. Uh, so you know, time to time we may have to make modifications, but we can literally have those programs and pull the program and have the have the robot make this in like something that takes us months in few days. Uh, so that's impressive. the power of automation, right? Yeah, this is this is impressive. I mean, this is I can totally see how the different pieces of the puzzle can get connected uh, together. Mm -hmm. and, I'm, enjoying, uh, and I'm, enjoying, I'm enjoying the tour myself. I forgot <laughs> that I'm supposed to communicate with you. I'm like, yes, yes, what's next? So take so, us wherever you 
Come to our owner. So there, so we have the you saw the quarter inch head and you see the half inch head right here. And then there's a uh, there's a tape laying head that's on its way. Uh, that's gonna have uh, so the tape laying head. Nice thing about this, if you have something like a uh, the 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 wing skin which is fairly flat, you don't want to use this type of you know uh, slit tape for that. It's more efficient to use uh, like a wider material. So the uh, the tape laying head that we're gonna get uh, that will that can do six inch. Nine inch and twelve inch wide tape, and also we are doing research on uh, using lightning strike material and and as well as uh, uh, you, special coating. Are you are you planning to? Of course, I mean uh, with the appropriate tool. Are you planning to at one point uh, lay up some portions that are more of less complex with the ATL, and then come and yeah. do some AFP uh, in right, some. Right. So is this something on your plan? Oh, yeah. So so that's the neat thing about this machine, right? Because this robot can go drop whatever he's doing and then pick up any of the other heads. So um, right now we have programs uh, lined up till 2024, right? So and, and one of the largest programs that we have from the Air Force called uh, the, uh, the it's named uh, the Air Force Research Lab is called uh, modeling for affordable sustainable composites so that program we're trying to build uh, these certification protocols for these advanced materials as well as these automated pro processes where it's all the way from developing material uh, specification material allowables and eventually so we will be building thermoplastic uh, welding uh, compression molding injection molding over molding those type of automated technologies and bundle them into a representative structure. Uh, in this case, because it's funded by the Air Force, we'll be uh, working very closely with them. We have Boeing, Lockheed, uh, Northrop Grumman, Spirit Aero Systems that are partnering with us on this program. Uh, we're working very closely. And eventually, we will build a uh, demonstrator uh, article, uh, so the reasonable size demonstrator article that kind of combine all of these uh, manufacturing uh, technologies into one uh, one article. Can we and get closer to the tool? Let's go, we see let's go to, so this, this tool you're looking at, uh, so just to give you an idea, the curvature, uh, this is the same curvature on a 787 uh, aircraft. Uh, this is a tool that you saw on that video that you played uh, earlier. Uh, we are building a, uh, a stiffened structure. So after we build the wing skin, this we are, we are using the same tool to do this demo panel. But uh, so this is the same curvature. Um, and then this rotator that you see, uh, we can have a tool up to about 15,000 pounds, a uh, heavy tool. And then the floor is actually designed to have a larger rotator, although we don't have it installed here right now. In the future, if you need to expand, we don't have to tear down the, the concrete. So the floor is actually set up right now to uh, get the next size rotator. And uh, this particular pa uh, uh, the, the, the panel was laid up using our infrared heater. Uh, just uh, last couple of days, we've been using uh, laser as well as HUM3 for doing some uh, uh, dry fiber as well as thermoplastic. I believe we have the thermoplastic panel still laying on this table here. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, you can see that it's a half inch uh, half inch uh, uh, toe, um, and uh, these are basically we are doing a lot of trials these days uh, to kind of tune the machine and and uh, you know uh, uh, you know make sure everything's uh, working. Uh, perfect. Uh, that's why our electro impacts uh, team's been working here for the last uh, three months very hard. Uh, uh, you know, uh, hard, you know, working uh, very hard to get this thing set up uh, so that we can start working on our research programs that's already lined up. And uh, this is uh, this is our laser system here. You can see uh, in this uh, casing here uh, from laser line, and then we also have the HUM3 system. Um, uh, this is a light-based system, uh, fairly new technology. Uh, 
uh, that we can use for dry fiber as well as thermoplastic uh, because it's uh, so this is uh, this is built by a company named Harayos uh, uh, and and we've been uh, so the next few years we'll be working on uh, developing process specification for dry fiber uh, and and uh, and thermoplastic using these type of technologies and we can actually walk to our other uh, uh, facility uh, in the next uh, next room so if you uh, while we are walking, you can ask me a few questions. Uh, sure. Now we, are out, now we are outside. Actually, actually, what I would like to say something that's very important for people that are um, listening to us, it's uh, size do matter in automated fiber placement because you cannot run tests at smaller scales. So sometimes people say, look at these right. big machines and say, can't we just make it on a smaller scale? The answer is no. You cannot... So, yeah, I I hundred percent agree because I still remember I uh, at the beginning you know when I was uh, you know literally right after our, uh, you know this uh, this, uh, this CEO of Spirit announced this new building and talk about you know what we have to do for the next uh, few years to get uh, uh, you know to, you know to tackle this demand for aircraft uh, we had several meetings and I still remember today that I was with uh, one of my spirit colleagues and uh, uh, I was telling him that, hey, you know, uh, I have this budget to get this small uh, AFP machine, which is a tabletop machine. And, and I could see, he didn't want to hurt my feelings and he could see his eyes roll, but he didn't say anything, but I knew, <laughs> I knew what he was talking about because, you know, they are, they are, you know, day in, day out, they're trying to solve manufacturing issues. So if he were to use some of these smaller machines, now, there is an intermediate step, the scaling issue, which is a very big deal. So with their support and a lot of the DOD, uh, especially Navy and the Air Force and the Army, uh, we were able to, uh, over the years, through multiple uh, proposals, uh, we were able to acquire these uh, uh, industry scale machines so that we can do uh, applied research. So if they were to, literally, they can ship their tool here uh, with the software, right, the, the, the program, and we can run it here without ma making a whole lot of changes because it's the same scale. We can walk into our, so this is our control room for the, uh, the, the Coriolis machine. Um, and uh, this is one of the first machines uh, that we set up here. Um, let's go in, this is, uh, Need to make sure. Yep. Yeah, the safety is important. Again, like the other room, this is a laser, uh, laser, uh, laser wall. You see in the back, uh, so that we protect our uh, operators. Um, and uh, so the overall, uh, overall, this. Uh, give me just a second. Um, the Please overall. Uh, just uh, to let you know what's uh, what's happening on on the chat on the messages. Um, Impressive, that's impressive. Hello, high technology, props. Uh, like everybody is so excited about, um, about, about this. So this is really, 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 like I'm enjoying it and people on LinkedIn guys, are really, really enjoying it. Can you, uh, can you guys still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I thought I saw a comment saying somebody's having a hard time uh, hearing maybe when we were uh, crossing the building you know i can hear you perfect okay and so, for some reason, I stop hearing you keep at it so, no worries so here's the coriolis machine um i'm gonna try to go up without uh, you know making a somersault here so um you can see compared to the head you saw before uh this is a smaller head uh that's because the you don't see the composite materials here uh, so it has some unique advantages where you can get into tighter areas uh, this is our laser uh, laser system uh, laser heater for this system um, and uh, so where is the material right so uh, the material is um, can I walk through here Thank you. Oh, there, there is. <laughs> I, I missed it. Okay, so here's here's the here's the spool uh, that uh, I mean the, the creel house where all the materials at, and then basically the material 
the material uh, gets into the head through the umbilical that you see up on the top. Um, so because the, the, the creel house and everything is attached here, uh, like the, the, the previous head you saw, you won't be able to uh, swap the head back quickly. Uh, but this, uh, because of the size of the head, you can get into very tight areas. So these systems have uh, uh, very unique um, uh, capabilities uh, that works for different uh, uh, solutions. So now we also have uh, next summer, we'll have a, uh, uh, the dual robot system from uh, uh, Microsam uh, that Valley's team's working on. Um, and then also uh, we'll have uh, uh, automated dynamic systems that we're going to get a, uh, 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 here sometime next uh, year. Um, so, 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 so this, hold, this is... hold on a second on me. Hold on, hold on a second on me. So you're telling me you already have a EI machine and a Coriolis machine, and you're getting two other types of machines. Yes. So this is why I said this is a Disneyland for uh, AFP and thermoplastic because all of these systems have the uh, thermoplastic uh, manufacturing capability. So think about uh, you have a design for, let's say, urban air mobility. Like if you think about big, co you know, big companies, they have their own R&D. They are they have their own separate R&D robots. But if you're a small company or a medium sized company, you cannot tie your production machines for R&D. So what you see here everything that you saw, you can consider that as an extension to industry's R&D. So if, if a company uh, want to say, well, you know, let's, let's uh, you know, we have this urban air mobility system. Let's see how, how much of this we can automate, how much of this can be manufactured using automated manufacturing. So, but before you spend millions of multi-million dollars of investment, uh, you can literally come here and uh, you can say, hey, let's, uh, let, here's our tool that we use for hand layup, right? Uh, let's see which, which one of these solutions is going to work because we have multiple machines, multiple heating systems. So you can do R&D uh, and, and, and here with our students and staff uh, and, and then figure out, okay, this is the combination that works for our, our structure. And this is the investment that we need to make. That's so, awesome. I'm I'm not familiar with the Coriolis machine. Like I'm familiar with quite a uh, big yeah. Number. You have you have hands-on experience with the EI machine, right? And and yeah, Ingersoll. and the Ingersoll. I mean, we, at McNair we have an Ingersoll machine, and uh, I'm lucky that I'm part of the Isaac team at Langley as well. So at NASA, so mm -hmm. I play around yeah, also yeah. with. Uh, so so what is this uh, tube at the top? Is this where the material feed system is? Yes. So you see that uh, gray color tube. Yes. Right. So the material will, will go, will go get fed in, and then it'll All come right. through the line. Uh, this this uh, this tube here, and that that inside this big tube, there are small uh, rectangular tube that guides the material into the head, and then you can see the material will come out of the head over here. All right. Awesome. So so I guess the type of AFP defects that we can expect is different um, because the material feeding system is not really traveling like the traditional ones. Right, so, so that, depend, that yeah, alone... de depending on the system, uh, like especially for the case for dry fiber, right? Uh, where you have, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the sort of a, the, 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 the dry fibers exposed on the sides uh, you may run into some issues, but the material suppliers have changed uh, their materials in order to cater for these type of machines. So, uh, I, you know, we, we work uh, last year, we work uh, with a, a material vendor uh, on, you know, dry fiber system that has usually dry fibers. You have the, uh, there's a thermoplastic veil on one side, right? Yeah, I mean, to have right, a little, so of, uh, to keep the, tech, to keep the bundle yeah. of fiber together. Right, and then tack, you know, tack, right? So, uh, but but when it goes through these pulleys, you can see they, they get uh, rubbed again, the sides get rubbed. Uh, but what they've done is they've changed the material and, and actually encapsulated the core in this thermoplastic rail. So the sides are now not, sides are not exposed. And we have seen a tremendous improvement to the, uh, the panels that come out. And uh, I'm not sure, there's a dry fiber panel we've uh, manufactured, 
uh, and 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 you don't see a whole lot of fuzz balls or any of that stuff. Uh, so uh, you you don't see a whole lot of fuzz ball or anything. Uh, and then panel turned out to be pretty good, and you can see it's a pretty thick panel as well. So it's a dry fiber. Then now we have to take this into a mold and and uh, infuse it with resin. Um, this is a this is a thermoplastic material. I'm sorry, thermoset material. So it's in the B stage. We still have to put this on a uh, the, the autoclave or oven or something and cure it. And uh, you can see some thermoplastic material over here. So this is a uh, this is a um, this is a panel made on that tool you saw. You see the curvature, right? Um, and and the beauty of this, it's it's already cured. This this panel is cured. So if if you're in the production and if you're building a structure, this doesn't have to be vacuum bagged or, or autoclave. This is ready for the next step. Now, there's a lot of research has to be done for what we call in situ consolidation. So I don't want I don't want to make it looks like oh it's ready to go today. So that's why we are doing a lot of research on in situ consolidation and things like that. So this panel was just out of that tool, and we obviously have to do a lot of inspection. So that's why you see, uh, so our sector X, that which we are not going in today, uh, focusing on a lot of high fidelity inspection. So what they're to doing today now is uh, they're actually inspecting a panel that we feed to see what type of internal defects that we have in here. So this is some, uh, this is traditionally how we do things, right? We, we inspect these parts after they manufacture to make sure that there are no porosity, foreign material, the delaminations or anything, you know, this, this, this type of defect. Now, in addition to post manufacturing NDI, we are also doing in process NDI. A lot of, uh, so this is a, uh, this is a system we have from uh, 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 Apodius. Uh, it's, a, it's a hexagon company uh, that's uh, in Germany, uh, which developed a um, uh, vision based uh, in process inspection system. This is a this is a dummy head, but this this basically the this is the the inspection module which we are in the process of attaching into this system. So this is only one of the in process inspection technologies that we are evaluating. We also have a laser perforometry based system in house. Uh, the electro impact has their own system. So we are we are we are using multiple of those in in process inspection systems to do, to find defects while you're making the part. So here we are doing it after we manufacture it. Uh, on, 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 with the in-process inspection system, what we can do is when the machine sees that there's a defect, we can basically stop the machine and have somebody go and repair it, or at least keep a record of that this, this defect is in this location, so we know to go repair it at a later time. Or we can say, well, that's an insignificant defect within the allowable damage limit for certification, and we'll just leave it alone. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna actually put one of your last slides in parallel to this because I think what you're talking about is the modeling for affordable, sustainable composites. Is that correct? Uh -huh. That's part of it. Yes. So, so I'm gonna all... go ahead. This is this is one of your this is one of the last slides yeah. uh, that we've so... had. So this, uh, uh, the, so the modeling for affordable, sustainable composites. This is uh, funded by the Air Force Research Lab, uh, and it has actually five tasks. What you see in this chart is one of the uh, part of one of the tasks. So it's, it's a larger program that will uh, span till you know basically go on for uh, until 2024. Um, the first part is looking into uh, fatigue uh, damage prog progression of composites. So we have done a lot of fatigue testing, not just constant amplitude, uh, actual uh, spectra that represent uh, transport, fighters, bombers, that type of airplanes. Um, and, and, that, and also that, that, that information we use for uh, uh, improving like uh, uh, BSAM, FRL developed BSAM or B-spline analysis method uh, that goes into discrete damage modeling. You know, you, you you talk you're going down to like a matrix level damage propagation. So that task one focus on uh, progressive fat fatigue damage analysis as well as certification. And, this is awesome. Well, and task uh, task two talks about goes into uh, developing processes, material and process development for advanced materials and processes. 
task three focus on thermoplastic uh, uh, welding uh, as well as the compression molding over molding that sort of advanced uh, manufacturing method so for therm that the, the the chart you saw is basically the roadmap for uh, thermoplastic welding starting from investigating uh, the receiving quality of our tape and all the way down to uh, process development using uh, thermoplastic welding what type of uh, 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 and we're basically developing our in-house tools that has in-process inspection system built into them so while we are welding these things we can use that information for closed loop controls um, and then basically scale it up and and uh, like I said earlier when we build our uh, large scale structure we can incorporate all of these things all these aspects in process inspection thermoplastic welding compression well uh, molding over molding that sort of thing into this structure so that chart basically focus on task three of mass this is awesome uh there, there is a question asking if um if people want to evaluate some new materials if they should mm -hmm. contact you directly the answer is yes so uh, from the next live page, you can see Waruna's LinkedIn, and you can actually on the page you can directly communicate with uh, with, with with Waruna. Um, we are we are at the end, unfortunately, uh, of right. our stream. We've been live for an hour and two minutes, mm -hmm. um, and so I first of all I want to thank you so much. I mean, this is nothing short of impressive. I. Mm. Um, I was planning to come visit, but then uh, COVID had other um, had had other plans for us. But I see that uh, Atlas is uh, thriving; is everything is going. So, any final words you want to say to um, what I call the next years people watching this show every Friday, twelve noon? Like um, anything you want to say about uh, Atlas or whatever you want to say? Some final words, right? Like I said at the beginning, Atlas is, you know, uh, it, it, the, the mission of Atlas is to promote automation as a whole uh, for inspection, manufacturing, testing, and, 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 and so on and so forth. The education, not just of a future generation, uh, giving them the right tool so that they, when they go to the industry, so they are ready for, to go to work the next day uh, and then increase their uh, 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 you know, capabilities, know-how, uh, you know, equip, equip, equip them with a set of tools so that they can be integrated into the workforce right away. At the same time, uh, develop workforce uh, training uh, program, which we, all, which we do all the time. I don't, I don't teach regular classes like elasticity or something like that, but we do develop a lot of uh, workforce training classes. So there's a series of workforce training classes that we're planning to develop uh, incorporating all of these tools so that people who are uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, afraid that, oh, this is gonna, going to take our jobs away, uh, they can improve themselves, they can learn these new technologies uh, and increase their uh, uh, capabilities so that they can uh, be uh, seamlessly integrated into the, uh, the, the, the factory of the future. So uh, I'm pretty excited about the uh, educational component to this as well as supporting the industry bring industry here so that they can uh, do some of the research projects that they set aside because they don't have the right tool or their tools are busy. So they put these aside so they can, they can come here, work with us, find solutions. And that actually, there's a benefit for that to us as well because our students are engaging with these industry yes. partners. They're doing real things. That's a very, very important thing for us to be in a, a, a university that's focusing on applied research. And this is pure music to my ear. I, yeah. I know. the The thing is, I know that uh, you practice what you preach. Like I know for fact that what you're saying. I mean, I've met your students. You've met my students. So we are um, we we are like minded. And the fact that you bring them to meetings with tons of industries and give them uh, such experience is is invaluable. So. Thank you so much for that, uh, Thanks, for that, Aruna. There is Thanks, uh, there is a Greg Francis who's saying uh, it's a very nice. Uh, first, before I read Greg's comment, uh, everyone listening to me live right now, please go ahead, throw uh, this uh, clap button to thank Waruna. Press uh, 
Thank you to Waruna. Uh, I'm going to read for you from Greg Francis because, and I would like to close with this because, um, because I know what he's saying is true from a personal experience. He says, hi, Waruna. It's nice to see how your plan has come together. Your program is a wonderful opportunity for future composite engineers. Where else can you find this much high tech <laughs> capability in one place? Congratulations. And there is a oh, thank ton you. Thank you. of people saying thank you from Naufel, from Neptali, from Kofi, from Andrew Anderson. He's an exterior who spent uh, one month in your lab, one of my students who. Yeah, who's yeah. Hashem and Venkatesan and Itak. So there's a ton of. So thank you so much, Waruna, once again. And looking forward for uh, the next time I see you face to face. Thank you, Rami. Have a, have a wonderful weekend. And thanks for the opportunity to showcase this, especially these days that we cannot travel. I'm pretty sure if, if the COVID wasn't here, you probably find some excuse to get here. But uh, hopefully, uh, maybe once this is all over, we can put that behind and, and uh, moving on with our day-to-day uh, -day lives. Yes, we will. We will definitely. We will definitely do that. I mean, this is. I mean, uh, no, nothing lasts forever. Time is the best. Uh, the best um, healer to actually move forward. And I can't wait so that we can travel again and mm. I can come and see you. Thank you so 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 much. Thanks. And till the next time. Yeah. Stay safe and healthy. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone, for uh, tuning in. Uh, this has been nothing short of impressive. We've had this is the second live that we have uh, together. Uh, we had a first live last week with uh, Professor Alman talking about Scrum. Uh, this week with uh, Waruna, we were uh, live from Nayar. This has been a treat to go live in the lab. Next week, we're going to talk about. Uh, artificial intelligence and from now until uh, the end of the semester every Friday 12 noon we're gonna go uh, live together thank you so much for uh, tuning in and till the next time